insane drama on paternity court. That's a babysitter. She don't need a babysitter. Hold on. I'm, I'm sorry. You know what? I apologize. It's obvious. Obvious. But I'm going to tell you now one more time or you will have your disrespectful self out on the curb. Stop cursing in this courtroom. No, I do. Fascinating testimony, Miss Day. We've been waiting You're all honest. day no. for this. No, I'm, I'm, I think people are getting confused of what I'm trying to say. Like, I'm going to let that testimony speak for itself. You know why? Because you have another child with her, so you're not gonna clown in here because that's acting a fool and that's what I don't do. Miss Phillips here has confessed to having a threesome and hooking up with the defendant's friend. Yeah, I know it sounds like a shocker, but still, the mommy was standing, blaming the defendant for having doubts and neglecting her daughter. I had to pay him to come over to babysit his you're daughter. I don't even pay her babysitter since he's been gone for the last month. You're I try to give what, my what friend do you money. Do for your, what do I do what for her? Do you do for I go to work every day. Buy what her do you do with your paycheck? I buy her food. I pay the bills in my house. You you're don't do nothing. Let's get some order in the courtroom. And FYI, this is just the beginning of the drama, because now it's time to air the dirty laundry. Turns out, this wasn't the first time that the plaintiff has stepped out on her man, as she has a whole list of her lucky suitors. All the men in the world, you want to go out and do your thing. What I'm saying oh, is, is I'm trying that to be change. what I just said. 18 names listed. Quite a list. A lot of those it's 18, two to three of them are my friends that she slept with. However, the mommy claimed that the diary part was just a big misunderstanding, that she was just keeping track of her past dealings, and that she was not the same person anymore. Plus, this trial wasn't about Miss Phillips, but rather about young Brooklyn, which brought us to the conception calendar. In green, you slept with a guy and another girl. Yes, so that was unprotected sex that's on the, the 12th. Second, that's the second Yes. Reason. In blue, the 17th and the 21st are dates you slept with his friend. Both of my friends. It's not just no, one. the first guy is not his friend. That was my friend's friend, and he's trying to claim him as a friend. Okay, this doesn't look pretty. Miss Phillips, however, the plaintiff refused to take all of the blame. In her defense, the alleged father was the one who pushed her into the arms of other men with his insecure behavior. He's a liar. He lied to me about his age when we first got together. He lied about cheating on me. When I was three months pregnant, I let him know that. And then he blew up on me in a gas station parking lot telling me, go be with this guy, go give him oral sex, Yana. go. And I just basically told him my kid doesn't need a dad. Man, this is getting harder with every passing second. Both of the parents had a very odd dynamic, and the person suffering the most was the baby girl. While they were busy neglecting their child and cutting each other no slack, Judge Lake pointed this out. You've got to take responsibility for the fact that he may not fully believe he is the child's My father. My a year old. I told him before she was even here. My point is, if he has doubts, that may affect the way he is present in this child's life, right or wrong. However, the odd part was that, though Mr. Maltese knew about Miss Phillips's raw deal, he still signed the birth certificate and claimed paternity. But why the sudden change of heart? Why make a sport of an innocent child? He tells hey, me, hey, hey, he tells me when I expect in this courtroom. Why? She don't need a babysitter. Hold on. I'm, I'm sorry. I you apologize, you know what? Your Honor. You know what? I apologize. It's obvious, obvious. But I'm going to tell you now one more time, or you will have your disrespectful self out on the curb. Stop cursing in this courtroom. After this, Miss Natalie confronts Mr. Maltese, requesting he keep their child overnight due to her night shifts. Maltese accuses Natalie of irresponsible behavior, alleging she misled him about their relationship. The paternity of their child is in question, and Maltese claims Natalie uses him for child care. I work nights. I cannot go get her on the bus and take her home on the bus late at night. I don't care, Natalie. Come get your kid. I don't want this kid in my house. He left voicemails. Did you say on that? My, he left voicemails on my phone of my daughter crying. Eh, dad, dad, dad. Like, what am I gonna think as a mother that's happening to my child? Did that happen, Mr. Maltese? Yes, it has, Your Honor. This broken couple had their peepers locked onto that DNA scoop. No room for mercy. It's like when respect jumps ship. Only the hardcore truth keeps peeps connected. Ain't no sugarcoating. It's time to get real. Mr. Maltese, you are her father. That's all I want to know. A month of your life wasted. You better make it up. You're the one that kept it from me. What do you have to say, Mr. Maltese? I'm very happy to know that she's my daughter. You want more babysitting? You better be a dad. The reason why I doubted her is because she had three sons with multiple guys. The courtroom was about to become a battleground of truth and parenthood. 
Strap in, folks, because this ain't your regular episode. Mr. Harrington claimed the defendant was pinning a baby on him. Yup, he was singing that song, but the case was just getting started. Elena is not my child. Uh, this is the reason, though, because there's other contenders, and she's a promiscuous person. She like to be, you know what I'm saying? She a party person, so <laughs> she do whatever she feel like she want to do, and she knows I'm a good father to the child I already got with her. You know, I'm a good person, and I take care of my responsibility. So, the potential baby daddy dropped truth bombs, accusing the mama of playing pin the baby on the good dad game. Meanwhile, she was standing firm, claiming divine maternity. Oh, you won't believe what she testified to. He is not the father of my child. I am the Virgin Mary. There is no other, there is no other possibilities. I have not been messing around with anybody else the Virgin throughout Mary. the time that we were messing around. Well, you get... So you are 100% positive Mr. Harrington is, is your child's biological yes, father. Yes, ma'am. Who knew an MRI appointment would turn into getting the news of a lifetime? Well, that happened to our dear Miss Day. Oh, the glamour. However, baby daddy soon jumped into evidence of why he was not the guy the woman was looking for. Huh, it was one heck of a text chain. A text comes through to your phone and it says, baby mama. how your baby mama pregnant and her and your sister hiding it from you. It might be guy number one baby though. You write back, who is this? So you just an anonymous tipper, huh? Yeah. Yup, can't tell you who I am. She won't tell me nothing else. So text messages from an anonymous tipper, missed cycles and a sprinkle of denial. That was what created this paternity chaos, and it was brimming with some more as the baby daddy delved deeper into his doubts, taking us right along with him. Uh, fun. I didn't pick up the phone or something like that. But you never told like me you was pregnant, though. I did tell no, you I was pregnant. No, you didn't. You told, I found out in January. I found out in January, too. That's no, when I went to go. Your Honor, Lord I mercy. found out when I found out that I was pregnant. So all them missed periods. In and you, January. All them missed periods. And when you, and I you, went okay. to go and do my MRI. You know you got two other kids. I was already four months pregnant. Oh, something was amiss. And you can see the confidence with which mommy started testifying slowly crumbling as all the skeletons in her closet come out to play. But first, let's sort out this guy one and guy two mystery. So you were pregnant, but you're saying there was no guy number one and guy number two. No, it wasn't. It, was. There, there lie is, number one, lie there number is two. a guy number one and a guy number two, but not a guy number one and a guy number two potentially to be my, my child's father. But well, you believe you were pregnant before you start talking to these guys. I know I was pregnant before then. Well, doubts were there, but daddy still showed up at the hospital. Now we gotta hear that story from the defendant's witness, because her version took the cake in this Who's the Daddy saga. When he came to the hospital, he asked her not to be named Nelania. He wanted her to be named Naya. Um, they just trying to make He don't want to admit nothing because he feel, cause his girlfriend told him that if he's the father to this baby, that he would have to, they would break up. And they he don't want to go. They broke up. Moving on, the baby daddy comes up with an interesting chauffeur analogy to describe his fun times with Miss day. But that's not just it. He came prepared with an exhibit. Buckle up, it was confusion conception time. In November 10th. How are you going to have a baby with Do me? Do you in November, realize? In November, when I left in the middle of October. And in the previous testimony, Ms. Day, you did admit that you weren't intimate with other guys until November because you were with him September, I, October. Yes, ma'am. I wish that I had the messages because I went back to look at it. Well, that was one heck of a calendar and its calculations. People certainly did their homework, and it was making sense. Mommy didn't vibe with that, so she laid into it. Even when we calculate the weeks, there is never an opportunity, even for doctors, okay. to understand this completely. Because the truth is, it is hard to calculate since you all were having sex one month, and then the next month, you're broken up, you've moved on. That's a window of time that leads us straight to this courtroom. This is what we do. Well, looky here. This day was all over the place. Oh, yeah. I bet she was regretting coming to court now, and her switching up her testimony in one last ditch effort to save face backfired. Uh oh. I know that it's only, could be a, only one other person. You don't know. You don't know. No, I do. Fascinating testimony, Miss Day. We've been waiting You're, all day no, for this. No, I'm, I'm, I think people are getting confused of what I'm trying to say. Like, I'm gonna let that testimony speak for itself. Now that all made this last part all the more interesting. Wouldn't you guys agree? Well, the results were in. 
and Judge Lake seemed about ready to deliver her final verdict on the mess these guys created. Let's find out who was the daddy. It has been determined by this court. Mr. Harrington, you are not Told the father. you. What? Told you, Are bro. you serious? Told you, can I really rock? No, no, you right. can't. Sorry, I bet. No, you I'm can't. Sorry. You know why? Because you have another child with her, so you're not gonna clown in here, okay. because that's wow. acting okay. a fool, and that's what I don't do. Miss Johnson is considering divorce because she feels her husband, Mr. Johnson, is making her choose between him and her 12-year-old son, Elijah. They have separated several times during their seven-year marriage. Mrs. Johnson wants the court to mandate family counseling for Mr. Johnson, hoping to save their relationship. I just want my kids to feel equal. I want my oldest true. son to feel When you to say he shows love. favoritism, explain to the court how. Okay, for an example, I put my kids in baseball. He would participate in our son Ethan's, and he would never participate in Elijah's. That's not that true That photo right there was Elijah's birthday, and I took, him, I took him to the go-kart. However, Mr. Johnson felt that his wife, Mrs. Johnson, does not support his role as a father figure to her son Elijah. He believes that since he's been present in the boy's life from a young age, he should automatically receive respect from Elijah. Mrs. Johnson counters by emphasizing that Mr. Johnson should proactively assume a more involved fatherly role. He doesn't take an extra step in, like, as far as going to the PTA meetings or... Uh, Did I? In the beginning? Yeah, in the beginning, in the beginning. but things have changed. And a lot they, has changed. You can't expect different results when you're not willing to he make a change. He undermines me at home. He's what 12. is he going to do you're there? 33. Exactly. Discipline your son. Mrs. Johnson read a letter from her son, Elijah, expressing his distress over Mr. Johnson's behavior and his desire for them to separate. Mr. Johnson dismisses the sentiment, attributing it to Elijah's purported disrespect, seeking to understand the depth of the issue. My son refuses to come home when me and Mr. Johnson are together. I have a letter from my son right here. I'll read it. All right. My name is Elijah. I'm 12 years old. I don't want my mom and Jason to be together anymore. I don't like Jason at all. I don't like being around him. I don't ever want to see him again. He hurts my feelings because he does stuff with my brother and don't want to do stuff with me. Mr. Johnson expresses his frustration, stating that Elijah disrespects everyone, including him, his brother, and his mother. He emphasizes the constant arguments over simple tasks and the lack of discipline from Mrs. Johnson. When issues arise during her absence, he feels blamed for her return rather than the children being addressed. He disrespects everybody. He disrespects his brother. He disrespects me, his mother. He talks back. She fights with him constantly over the simplest things. Clean your room. Listen, don't talk back. It's always an argument. Take the dog out. Feed the dog. Whatever it is, he cannot do it. He cannot be disciplined. She won't discipline him. And instead of disciplining him, she, she babies him. Mr. Amolsh, Elijah's grandfather, testifies about the favoritism he has witnessed noting that Elijah is often excluded. He gives examples of unequal treatment, like getting ice cream and how the children are spoken to. Mr. Johnson challenges Mr. Amulsh's perspective, pointing out potential bias given that he's Elijah's grandfather. I see Elijah being left out on a lot of things. Father, son, the ice cream. You ask Ethan to pick up your room. It's like, would you pick up your room? What's wrong with you? Why don't so you? So why are we here for the way you talk to Ethan? You know, talk to him like a human being, not like an animal that did something wrong. Greg brought Mercedes to court because he wants to prove he's the father of her young kid, whereas Mercedes denies this claim. She says the child's father is someone else. Greg says she's doing this because she wants to be with the other man. Wait till you hear who the other man is and what their dynamic is like. Well, Your Honor, I grew up in the streets of Detroit. No dad in my life. And I just want to make sure that my son doesn't have to grow up like I did. And uh, That's a beautiful basket there. You brought that for your son once you prove your case? Yes, Your Honor. You say you grew up without your father? Yes, ma'am. So, it goes something like this. Greg met Mercedes because he was dating her roommate. Mercedes was dating Greg's cousin, Maurice. One time, Maurice and Mercedes fought, and she and Greg had sex. Later on, they decided to bring Greg into the relationship to spice things up. Bonkers, right? We decided to include Greg in our mix and try and spice things up. Oh, so how often was that happening? It happened... Off and on for like 10 years. What? It's before... It's it before, wasn't 10 years. It's before, it's before... It's before... It happened like this, Your Honor. I've been knowing her 10 years. So, was Mercedes cheating on Maurice with Greg this entire time? Not at all. 
One time, Maurice was at a hotel with another girl and Mercedes found out when she asked Greg to take her there. After confirming her suspicions, she decided to sleep with Greg and wait till you hear about what happened next. She used to call me and confide in me to like, after I hooked them up as friends and stuff, and they got it on, you know, and when they get have their little disputes or whatever, he be cheating and all that, she called me crying and stuff. And you know, I had to go over there and kind of help her cheer up and stuff, you know. <laughs> Mercedes texted Maurice telling him she was having sex with Greg. He replied that he was going to be there in 15 minutes, and that's when Greg ran away without even putting on his clothes. Mercedes says she believes Greg isn't Javier's father because they didn't even finish the act. The pair says this was the only time they had unprotected sex. We was having intercourse. He ended up messaging me about 15 minutes later and said, I'm on my way. Probably too late after that. I looked at my phone, seen the message. Greg immediately jumped up. Didn't even finish, you know, we was interrupted. And he ran out the house. He ain't even have clothes on. He didn't finish. So what happened when Maurice found out Mercedes was pregnant? She says he didn't doubt the paternity and was generally fine about it. Later on, he called Greg and told him the kids were actually his, and Maurice was taking care of them for no reason. Greg says Mercedes' first kid was also conceived within the threesome, but she denies it. The times when both kids, was, you were having, having sex with Miss Saavedra, either within the threesome or alone. Yeah, That's yes, Your Honor, true. and I see. Not with the first one, no. It was yes, months Lord, prior, months prior. It was not around that same time. So now there's a question about Javier's paternity. Yes, Your Honor. Greg says Mercedes is doing this because she wants both her kids to have the same father. However, neither man is on the birth certificates. He says he even called her, and she said there's a chance he could be the father. Mercedes keeps denying all this, while Maurice sends a statement saying he also believes the child is Greg's. Last year, Mercedes and I got into it because she thought I was having sex with another woman, which I wasn't. In retaliation, she had sex with my cousin Greg with no rubber. Shortly after, she comes up pregnant. I found out that they had been having sex behind my back for years. Since the dirty mess has come to light, I don't think her son is mine. He looks like Greg. Greg produced photos that show Javier resembling Greg and and not Maurice. He even brought a basket with stuff a baby needs as a gesture of goodwill in case he is proven to be the father. He says he isn't worried about Mercedes being his cousin's girlfriend as he slept with her first. So, will the DNA test solve this mess? It has been determined by this court. Mr. Pitchford Kendricks, you are not the father. <laughs> I can see that that really disappointed you. You thought you were. You know, I tried to step up to the plate because I didn't have a father. 